Hey, 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 Team HQ Sports. Thank you for joining me on this beautiful Monday night. I am indeed your host, Lauren Gambino. I don't know about you, but I had a great weekend. A little Yankees old timers day. And today, watching Team USA continue to make us proud with another win. But hey, if your weekend wasn't so great, then you're in luck. I'm giving away some money tonight with a special game of Sports Bloopers Trivia. Oh, yeah. This is going to be a fun one. And don't worry. It's the same way. We always play HQ Sports. I'm going to take you through 12 rounds of sports-only trivia. But this time, we're celebrating the best sports bloopers. You know, the bonehead plays, the whoopsies, and the face palms, right? They're going to start off easy, then they get tougher. Oh, that actually hurt a little bit. But if you can hang in the ring until the very end, then my friends, you'll be our newest HQ Sports MVPs. Oh yeah, and you'll win some cash, of course. $1,000 is on the line tonight. You know, enough to make a little blooper reel of your own life. I know you got them. I'm looking at you, Chad. I saw you actually fall up the stairs today. I know. How does that happen? You did it. Hey, think you're going to kill it tonight? Then pick up a points multiplier to earn more points for every question you answer correctly. It's still season four of HQ, so having those levels really help. Free passes are literally the best thing. I personally would not get past level five in trivia without them, so definitely stock up on those points. All right, team, you know I love a good warm-up before gameplay. I want to make sure you don't pull a muscle, of course. We start things off on Twitter before every game of HQ Sports. You can conveniently find us at HQ Sports. Look at that. In honor of tonight's game, what is your favorite sports blooper? We had so many fun answers. If you're in need of a laugh today, definitely go check out that Twitter thread. But two of them were mentioned the absolute most. At c.judge, at mossfan563, and at ronburgundy27 all say, J.R. Smith. Oh, yes. Amazing. I mean, LeBron, you gave us something that I personally use in my life all the time. The perfect meme. Oh, and so many people, including at Kaplan King, at Burn Q, at Ross O'Hara 64, at The Real Kenny Hand, and at Ben Wadsworth all say the only answer to this question is, of course, the butt fumble. I have never seen this. Gotta see it again because it is just too good to be true. Up there it is. Mark Sanchez, you forever gifted us with the butt fumble. I love it. Those are the best, aren't they? Well, hang on tight because it's about to get really wild up in your phones. I apologize in advance if I lose it and I start laughing, all right? Because we got some good ones coming up. All right, so the over 105,000 players ready to test your memory on some of the best worst moments in sports history. Let's go. I'm throwing out the first pitch. Round one starts right now. <gasps> oh, my. Oh, my God. Did I break it? Oh my god, they can still hear me? Did I say something bad? Did I say a bad word? <gasps> gotcha! <laughs> Had to do a little HQ Sports blooper of our own. Does it count? That wasn't Tr good. Uh, Andy Johnson once threw a pitch. Yeah. This was one that I thought was fake for so long. Randy Johnson is a Hall of Famer, but to PETA, he's the enemy. He once threw a fastball, almost as fast as I did before, at about 100 miles per hour that hit a bird. What are the odds of a bird? I mean, it's kind of sad, but kind of crazy, right? Round number one, 75,521 of you knew that one. Mm -hmm. And did you know a fun fact? The hitter at that time was Calvin Murray, Heisman winner Kyler Murray's uncle. The more you know. And hey, did you know that you can use extra lives, multiple extra lives per game, up to three now per game. So stock up on them now. 
It really helps at a round where you get a little TKO. You just pop right back in the ring for another chance. And trust me, you're going to want to stay alive in this game because this is just going to be so much fun. All right, round number two. Let's keep it going. What skater interrupted her routine in the 94 Olympics to complain about a broken shoelace? Tanya Harding, Katrina Vitt, or Nancy Kerrigan? Oh, who watched this live in 94? Marring an otherwise, you know, pretty spotless career. Wink, wink. Tanya that. Harding had a meltdown about a lace that may or may not have been broken. Tanya Harding, they weren't going to let you restart. Oh, man, that's your answer here at round two, 65,348 of you knew that one. Listen. We've all had a Tanya Harding meltdown like that, right? A moment or two, but a breakdown like that really never wins anyone over. Just ask all the cops that have ever pulled me over. Just kidding, I never show fear, I'm too proud. Round number three, Zinedine Zidane received a red card in a World Cup final for doing what? Removing his shirt, a headbutt, or diving? Hmm, what did he do? What got him a red card? Zidane is one of soccer's greatest stars and even had a successful career as a manager after he retired from playing. But this inexplicable moment, let's wait for it, wait for it. Whoa, the headbutt in the 06 final helped Italy defeat France. Headbutt is your answer, 66,820 of you are using your heads in the right way. Zidane was not. You can't do that, my man. It'll get you a red card every time. All right, things are going to start getting a little tougher from here. Let's go. Round four. On the play, Cal beat Stanford when their kick returner scored a last-second touchdown by dodging what? The band, reporters, or a mascot? Oh, this is one of the greatest clips of all time. I'll just show you. How about that? Down to the 20. Oh, the band is out on the field. He's going to go into the end zone. He's going into the end of the field. <laughs> about that one and yeah somehow no flags were thrown on this play which might have been the ultimate too many men on the field situation right moving on to round number five let's do it when chris weber called a timeout his team didn't have in the 1993 ncaa title game what was the call technical foul flagrant foul or delay of game violation Woo! that was a long one to get out did it in time. All right. C. Webb was one of the most fab of the Fab Five, right? Carrying Michigan to two straight title games. But he's still remembered for that unfortunate time out and the technical foul that helped cost them the game. Technical foul is your answer here at round number five. Doinks, 53,400 of you knowing that one. And hey, if it makes you feel a little bit better, he also traveled on that possession. Just saying. We're moving on to round number six. Let's do it. What player hustled to force this famous fumble in a Super Bowl? His team still lost by 35. It's a 60 yard run. Watch out. Did he get across? No, they are not. That's what player forced that fumble? Was it Leon Lett, Don Beebe, or Thurman Thomas? Oh, yeah. Who was it? Someone came out of nowhere and just meh, took that away. Well, Let was the man strutting with the ball, and he couldn't have held it less carefully if he tried. Mr. Don Beebe stepped in at the right moment and stopped this touchdown from happening. Don Beebe is your answer here. 51,226 of you getting that one right. Man, what a letdown that was. Get it? Let down, let down. Cowboys still won. I'll be here all night. Well, at least for the next couple questions or so. Let's do it. Round number seven. Which of the Vikings purple people eaters D lineman once ran 66 yards the wrong way for a safety? Carl Eller, Alan Page, or Jim Marshall? 
go Fair through? warning here, I may not be able to contain myself for this one. It always makes me laugh. The Purple People Eaters were one of the most dominant defensive lines ever. With these three and Gary Larson, they were responsible for a lot of sacks and one all-time blooper. <laughs> Marshall, 34,801 of you knew that one. Yeah, you know what? He thought he was doing something really great, but he ended up getting a safety. <laughs> oh, I needed a second to regroup, and it's just fitting that it's the seventh round stretch. Amazing! In honor of all of those great sports bloopers, we couldn't fit everything into tonight's game. Here are our honorable mentions. Paul, this is fantastic. This is absolutely marvelous. <laughs> I've never seen anything quite like it. This flop, if you can call it that, it is so bad. <laughs> Smith is going to have to go all the way back in. It's, a it's still loose. It's still loose. Rolling all the way back. This ball is still loose. Anyone going to get that ball? Nope. Who yep. wants the football? <laughs> Oh man, I love this game. Let's keep it moving. Round number eight. What player made an error to blow a double play immediately after the Bartman play in the 03 NLCS? Alex Gonzalez, Mark Pryor, or Mark Grudzlianic? Oh, known as the Bartman game after that spectacular fan interference. Ah, this game actually had so many issues, it could have been named a million different things. How about we name it? The Alex Gonzalez game. Oh, yeah, a real player who dropped the ball on the field. Mm hmm. Alex Gonzalez <laughs> is your answer here at round number eight. 31,922 of you knew that one. I hope you are all enjoying this one as much as me. None of these get old or tired for me. They are hysterical, and we got a couple more to go. Let's do it. Round number nine. In what major tournament did a French golfer famously blow a three-shot lead on the final hole in 1999? The Masters, PGA Championship, or British Open? Whew, getting it together here for the end, for all of our sakes. Carnoustie was the setting for Jean Veldeveld's Memorable triple bogey on 18 when a double would have given him the title at the 1999 British Open. He went and blew it. British Open is your answer here at round number nine, 27,442 of you knew that one. The triple bogey actually put him in a playoff, which he still ended up losing. It's never a good way to go out, of course. And hey, it's never a good way to go out when you're finally into the final quarter of the game. Come on, this is when you gotta give it your best shot. Let's go, round 10. On a potential game winner, Fred Merkel cost his team the pennant when he failed to touch what base? Second, first, or home? Listen, this is why I always say, when in doubt, run it out. You never know. Possibly Most baseball's he, biggest be, right? blunder. It happened in 1908. Fred Merkel didn't bother going from first to second on what would have been a game-winning hit. He was ruled out. The Giants lost, missed the pennant by a game, and the Cubs won their 1908 World Series. Second base was the base we were looking for here. 15,000. Eliminated there on round 10. We got two left. You got to be in this. Let's go. Round 11. When Colorado did. National title because in 1990, the AP vote and coaches vote decided the national champs and they were split. Fast forward 30 years later, we still haven't quite got it figured out, right? But listen, the fifth down. Because counting to four is actually a little bit harder than you think it is. The refs absolutely blew it, which helped Colorado score the winning touchdown against Missouri. They went on to win a share of the national title 
with Georgia Tech. Yep, they split it. Georgia Tech is your answer here at round number 11. 11,160 of you got that one right, knocking out another 7,000 here at round number 11. And you made it this far, honoring all of those fantastic sports bloopers. You really got to use your head on this next one. It's round number 12. Do you have what it takes to win the game? Let's find out. Round 12, coming at you. What team was Jose Canseco playing against when a ball bounced off his head for a home run? Indians, Rangers, or Twins? I'm Jose Canseco! Name that movie in the chat right now for extra points. Ah, oh, this blooper masterpiece came while he played for the Rangers and... His head helped what should have been a flyout go for a homer for Carlos Martinez and the Indians. The Indians is your final answer here at round 12. And we have 6,486 new HQ Sports MVPs. Congratulations. Told you you had to use your head for that last one. Doink, where'd it go? <laughs> we have 6,486 winners. I hope most of you are laughing just as hard as I am, and I'm really trying to keep it under control. I could watch all of those on loop and still laugh. They're just so good, but it looks like to over 6,000 of you, great work. We're all taking home a prize of about 15 or 16 cents. And I know what you're going to say, but that's more than you started with 18 minutes and 26 seconds ago. All right, Mr. MZ, I see you there. 15 cents is coming your way. Hal's 3, 15 cents is coming your way as well. Baker, 321. 15 cents is coming your way. Congrats to all of our new HQ Sports MVPs. That was such a fun game. I don't have to tell Just you twice. You saw how much I enjoyed it. Let us know on Twitter at HQ Sports if you enjoyed it too and if you want to do more games like this one. And why don't you come on back and play HQ Sports on Wednesday. 8 p.m. Eastern Time, Mondays and Wednesdays is our HQ Sports schedule. Mr. Matt Richards is in the building, and I hear he's got a massive jackpot to give away on trivia in less than an hour. I'm Laura Gambino. I'll be busting out of here like Jim Marshall. Which way again? I'll figure it out. But until next time, remember to hydrate, focus, and keep your head in the game. This way? Oh, this way. <laughs>